I know that it is April 1st today, but still, please don't prank me. Um, oh, hang on. I'm having a little internet thing. Let me try this. If I go away, I'll be back. Um, all right. Hopefully that's going to make the internet connection a little bit better. I have more cords on my table than you can imagine. Hopefully you all will uh, find me here in a minute. Uh, good morning, Debbie. Um, good. Hopefully my internet is better there at the beginning. I think you might see that it's not great, but um, I've plugged in an actual ethernet cable, so it should be better as long as Comcast is good to me today. So, um, good morning. Can you hear me? I have also a, um, mic problem, maybe, maybe not. Sorry, you all. Let's try this. Okay. Can you hear me now? Um, hopefully you can. So, uh, it looks like it's working now, as far as I can tell. So, um, good morning. <clears throat> so sorry. Apparently I have phlegm in the mornings. It's gross. Um, <laughs> good morning. It looks like you all are finding the feed and hopefully it's working. Um, good morning from all over. New York and St. Louis and Michigan and Grand Junction and Colorado, California. <clears throat> South Carolina. Um, no more pranks. Thank you, Ellen. Um, my family is not likely to prank me, although we do need a good laugh. So if they come up with something good, I won't be too bad. Ah, Ingrid, hello from New Zealand. Ingrid, it has to be like 3.30 in the morning there. Um, so I'm really happy that you're here, and I hope that you're either an up early person or a super night owl. Uh, Portugal, hello, Mandy, I'm glad you're here. Um, glad you found it. I know it's a little bit hard to find this feed, and um, I did put a new link. My very um, smart spouse did say, why don't you just put a link straight to the live page this morning? So on the Change the Shed page on my website, it now says there's actually a link that goes right to the page where you can click on this, I hope. Um, good morning from California and Texas and Vermont and uh, Vancouver, Washington, which is not Vancouver, Canada. Took me a while to learn that one. Georgia, Minnesota. Great. Thank you, Mandy. I'm glad you can hear me. Um, thanks, Robin. Good. The delay, I think, is about 30 seconds. So when I say something and then 30 seconds later catch up with something, it's because um, I'm 30 seconds in the future from you guys. Um, Nancy Vashon Island. I love riding the ferry from um, Seattle to the islands. They're wonderful. Um, oh, good. You can hear the clicks, Marlene. I didn't know if y'all could hear that or not. I don't actually know if I can. Um, oh, I don't know if I can turn that off. Um, hey, Marlena, do you hear the clicks now? And do you all still hear me talking? Um, buttons. Who knows? Um, so I, uh, it is April Fool's Day. I don't have any pranks for you all. Um, although I heard, did you see the stuff on Facebook or going around Twitter of the cashmere goats in the town in Ireland that are roaming free because everybody is home in their houses? And it's like a herd of wild cashmere goats. It's really funny if you are on Twitter or Facebook 
um, Facebook search for um, cashmere goats in Ireland and you'll find it. Um, oh my gosh, Sarah, I was going to ask you this. So this is Sarah in Idaho, Sarah Sweat. She says, um, this is what she says. They had an earthquake yesterday evening because life is not exciting enough. So I saw that on the news and I was, um, it's just so, seems so weird to have an earthquake in uh, Idaho and Montana. It was like 6.4 or something. So um, yeah, life is not crazy enough. We need earthquakes too. Uh, Ingrid says it is 5.30 in the morning there in New Zealand. It's pretty early. Um, Missy, you're not, are you not hearing me, Missy? Um, it's something with your YouTube or your system, because it seems like everyone else is able to hear me. So fuss around with wherever your sound is. Um, either your sound is off or you have head. I do this all the time. I can't figure out why I can't hear my computer. I'm editing a video and I realize that I have headphones plugged into the side of my computer. So you're probably not as dense as I am, Missy, but that's my biggest sound problem is that I have left headphones plugged into my, my MacBook is old enough that it still has a headphone jack. Um, thank you, Mandy. Glad to know you can hear me. So, so you guys still hear the clicks, huh? Um, don't actually know how to turn those off. Um, Let's see. Oh, hold on. Ah, mate. Oh, I still hear him. So I don't know. Um, don't know if that will. I think that my microphone is picking up the clicks, but um, Nancy in Wales, the goats. Oh, Wales. Nancy, I'm sorry. You're right. It was not Ireland. It was Wales, wasn't it? The goats are in Wales, not Ireland. Yeah, still get the clicks, sorry. Um, don't know how to fix that. Is that new? Did you hear the clicks yesterday? Um, uh, sorry, yeah, don't know. Oh, I know what I could do. Hold on. Okay, you should still be able to hear me and now you probably can't hear the clicks. Brilliant. So I have this little saffron loom today, and I hope you all have some kind of loom that you're working on. Um, and that you are all doing well in all of your places. Oh, good, Missy. Glad you hear me now. I, I turned something off, so you might not hear me anymore, but... Okay, new technology excitement. I know, every day. I'm learning though. Yesterday, you know what I learned? I learned how to plug my iPad into my computer and record the iPad using my um, video software. So I was really excited. No clicks yesterday. Okay, I'm hoping you don't hear the clicks now because if you don't, then I know what it is. But I don't know why they were not. Yeah, I'll try to figure it out later. Sorry about my camera. I still don't have that other cable. This is my tripod. Um, someday a cable will show up and you won't see my camera in the feed. But my cord, I have a cord over here to my computer and it's so short that I can't move the camera any farther away. Um, let Lynn from Edinburgh. Oh, Lynn, I'm so happy you're here. I remember Lynn because her husband is hilarious. Um, I mean, I remember Lynn too, but... It's funny the things you remember. Uh, Michelle, I'm remind reminded of the original Pong game. Um, so you guys still hearing the clicks? Uh, let me know. Because, oh, no clicks now. Thank you, Diane. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. You were hearing them through my computer audio. So I turned off the computer audio. So now, hopefully, remind me tomorrow. I'll probably forget. So I have this little... Um, Cool, okay, thanks you guys. I have this little, let me switch these. I have, um, 
I think I can make this smaller. This little saffron loom, someone said they just got theirs. Actually, a bunch of people just got theirs. And I had this moment this morning, actually, when I woke up, I thought, I don't know what I'm going to weave today. But I have to weave every day because now I've made myself weave every day. And uh, one of those mornings where something just came to me. Sometimes that happens. This is just a little tapestry diary piece, which for me means I don't have to expect anything out of it. It's just for fun. And that is helpful. Actually, Tommy Scanlon gave me a little. She probably doesn't know this, but she had a comment on a Facebook, something I wrote on Facebook yesterday, who reminded me, um, weave every dang day. And uh, thanks, Tommy, that actually is helpful to hear you say that, because I can hear it in my head. Weave every day. I'm doing a little pick and pick thing here. I want to do shaped pick and pick. so. When I woke up, I was thinking about this. This is my little sketch, and I'm not even using a, um, here, I can do this. I'm not even using a um, cartoon, because I don't need one. Um, this is pick and pick, and actually, the pick and pick, as you can see, is wider, because this is eight ends per inch, so it won't, I won't be able to make it that detailed, but that's my idea. And I just pulled out some yarn, and here we go. I wanted to play with this little saffron loom again. No clicks, thanks you guys. Good morning, Jennifer from the California desert. It is, um, I love the California desert. I wish I could go to the Sonora, or I guess that's uh, Arizona, or um, Joshua Tree. Okay, hold on. So I want to shape this pick and pick a little bit. So that's why I'm turning this around here. Oops, I have to go this way. So Mandy, this loom is called the Saffron Loom. It's from uh, Mirax. It's Mirax's new loom. They have just started shipping them. And I know you all that, those of you who are waiting, I know you're waiting anxiously for your new loom, but they had a lot of them to ship. So, and I believe that um, it is actually one of the owners of Merrix who is shipping them personally from her house. I'm not completely sure, but um, please be nice to her because it's not their manufacturing facility that's shipping them. It is Elena who is packaging them all personally and shipping them. So that's big. That is, if you've never had to do that, it's a lot of work. So be nice to her. Um, oh, it is part of the Sonora Desert. Thanks, Kate. The loom is called um, the Saffron Loom, Mandy, S-A-F-F-R-O-N. It's made by Mirix, M-I-R-R-I-X, who makes all those other looms. The loom I had on the first few days I was here, the hot flash piece, that's a Mirix. Nancy got her saffron yesterday. Devra, yes, that's right. Um, I met Devra in the Painted Desert in Arizona. There was a workshop there. I came to California a few years ago and did three workshops in a row, and I will probably never do three workshops in a row, but um, it was really wonderful to meet so many great people in California. So I'm, I'm doing the pick and pick here first, and then I'm going to and I'm shaping it, and then I'm gonna figure out how to fill it in. Undoubtedly, some of this will end up coming out and being rewoven because I 
playing it by ear, but so far so good. Also, I really wanted that to change colors, so I don't know if I will like that. Um, let's do this. You know what? That was too... I'm looking at, can you see these, these two colors, mixing them? And I need one intermediate. Joanne, I do have, um, I do have doubled salvages here. I often double my salvages um, on almost everything I do. Sometimes if I'm doing a figure eight warp on a pipe loom, it's harder to get the salvages doubled, but I like the doubled salvage and that's because the warp I use is actually quite thin. If you use a fatter warp, you don't really need this doubled salvage, but it does help keep the edges nice and straight. Um, Harlan's asking about this. This is my shed stick from Jim Hokett. And Jim is uh, retired now and he is, it is a well-deserved retirement, but I do miss him <laughs> as um, I think many of us probably do. So there are other people who make shed sticks out there though. And some of them I list in the courses and stuff. I doubt you'll be able to find a Jim Hokett shed stick anymore, but lots of woodworkers make shed sticks. <laughs> Mary got her saffron loom and got it together. Sarah, you're right. The uh, joy of, let's see, let's do this. The joy of weaving over under along with the high tech accomplishment of figuring out how to put my iPad screen, to have record my iPad screen with my computer was kind of thrilling. Linda, how would you compare the saffron loom to a Hokit loom, except for the tension device on the saffron? Um, so hang on. Let me see. Here's the advantage of having lots of looms. Here is a Hokit loom. And um, just for comparison, this is the um, Handy Woman loom, which is a, you know, a loom you could, you can get these now and um, at handywomanshop.com. And these are the Hokit looms. Jim Hokit is the guy I was talking about who retired. So Linda wanted to know how these two compare. And to be honest, um, they're super similar in how you use them. Obviously the pegs on the saffron come forward and the slots on the Hokit are on top, but I warp them really similarly. And um, actually the size here is quite similar also. The Hokit, this is the intermediate Hokit. It's a, obviously a couple inches longer, but um, I think I could get a longer threaded rod for the saffron. Um, so yeah, the only other difference is that the saffron has tensioning and that you can't get a Hokit loom anymore unless you're super lucky. Uh, apparently, uh, Merex has an April Fool's 15% discount. I don't think the Saffron Loom is on discount, just so you know, but um, the Shasta Combs are, uh, it's a thing you put on the Merex so that you can warp it. Um, let's see. So you can warp it uh, just like a peg loom instead of the continuous warping. So I'm trying to build this, these shapes up a little bit and shift the colors at the same time. 
and talk at the same time, so I'll probably screw it up. But So with the, here, let me zoom in a little bit more. If you can see that right here. This didn't, when I put this across, this pick and picks edge right here didn't go under as much as I wanted it to. I'm weaving from the front. So I'm gonna go back to here and leave a little more slack. Cause I want that to pull under with this blue yarn. Let's see if that worked or not. Y'all might call me liar. Oh, I see what I've got. This is actually um, um, a problem because I need the other edge treatment thing happening here. So nothing like trying to figure out what you're doing in front of a bunch of people. There are almost 100 people here right now. Linda got her saffron. Why didn't I start warping right at the edge? Joanne, that's just because I wanted it to be, I actually wanted it to be five inches wide and it turns out um, I didn't quite get it. This is four and a half. So had I gone uh, one more peg out on each side, I would have had five inches total. But. I don't know, no particular reason, Joanne. Um, I like to do narrower things is the only reason. Um, thanks, Alice. Yeah, it's just a size thing. So Eva and Robin are asking about the um, fiber. And um, hang on just a second. Sorry about that. Um, my studio happens to also be where the heater is in this house and you probably could hear the heater go on. Um, warp and weft. This is Harris, um, Harrisville Kohler Singles. If I back that out a little, it can focus better. So Harrisville Kohler Singles um, dyed by me. They only come in white or undyed, and this is 12-6 cotton seam twine, which is, comes on um, cones like this. This one's almost empty, but it is the best. It's a cabled warp, and it is my favorite. Um, sometimes I'll use a strong wool warp, but for the most part, I use that um, cotton seam twine. Ellen, you make me laugh. Um, Ellen, Ellen said this. Are you praying that no one asks how to keep your pick and pick edges so nice? Because I'm asking. Yes, Ellen, I am praying that no one will ask that. Um, practice. Practice is the answer. And consistency, as in almost all things with tapestry. It has to both do with practice and consistency. And having screwed up a lot in the past and learning how to um, fix things when you screw them up. Dinah, yes, this is a Hokit, Jim Hokit shed stick. It is my favorite. Um, yeah, Audrey, a bone folder's not a bad idea. It depends on how wide it is. So on a small loom like this, being able to put the shed stick in and turn it sideways to open the shed is important to me. And this shed stick is only a half an inch wide. Obviously a bone a bone, bone folder is usually wider. And so if you have a longer loom, then you can have a wider shed stick. But on a really short loom, um, the wider, you know, the wider you make the opening, the more tension there is on the 
warp and on a really short um, on a short warp Um, yeah, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> That's funny, Jessica. She said she used an emery board once on an airplane because she forgot her shed stick. I love it. The Hokit loom is um, easy to warp. I think any loom is something that you get used to as you warp it, but... Um, yeah, Nan, I think that's probably true. With a longer threaded rod for the saffron, you could probably do a fringe list with a jig if you were creative. Um, I'm not sure I would like the, um, yeah, of course, you could do it. I There's reasons I would or wouldn't like it, but it doesn't really matter. I'm saying if I had a longer threaded rod, I would have a longer warp. So I could make a longer piece, but also there would be more give in the warp, Robin. So the smaller a loom is, the tighter the warp, the less give there is in the warp. So that's why I was saying, I think yesterday I was saying that I like, um, even on the Merex looms, to extend them all the way, even if I'm not going to use all the warp, because um, the more, the longer the warp is, the more give there is. So this is really tight. There's not a lot of give. And if the warp is longer, I have a little bit easier time working with the shed. Leslie, this warp is 12-6 um, cotton Saint twine. And this is 8 EPI, so which is what this loom is set for. And so 12-6 um, is one that I like for 8 EPI. 12-9 is also a good one. Kit, I did just, I said at the top, and I probably um, should say it again, um, uh, it just occurred to me today, actually, it was a suggestion from my spouse, who said, uh, why don't you just put a link right to the live page? So if you go to my website under the online learning tab, it says change the shed, or go to rebeccamezoff.com slash change hyphen the hyphen shed there is a link that goes right to the page. There's also step-by-step -step instructions now with screenshots of how to find it. If you subscribe to me, um, it's a little easier, but honestly, not that much. I don't know why YouTube makes it so hard. Um, Kate <laughs> thought it was her heater. No, that was my heater. Um, now I know you can hear it. Ah, uh, Ruth, an insomniac Australian. Yes, it is early in Australia. Oh, good. I'm glad it helps Linda to see me make mistakes and fix them. Um, good dodge. Thank yeah, Ellen, I know. Um, uh, yeah, it, it is really just practice, though. I'm not making that up. So then I've got this sort of hole in the pick and pick, which... So pick and pick is a one, is not a meet and separate structure. It is a structure that has two threads going in the same direction. So um, it doesn't cooperate like a lot of other things. Oh, Linda, that's a good tip I didn't know. So Linda, um, says at the bottom of my so she's going straight to my youtube channel at the bottom of my website there is a link to my youtube channel and if you go there and then she says sometimes the rectangle showing the live feed comes right up if you just go to my youtube channel i don't know if that's true for everybody but that is a good i would love it if that were true so somebody test that out tomorrow so now i have a hole in here and i'm going to fill it in with regular weaving because I wanted this part to be solid. So you'll have to see tomorrow. See, in that, there was a good chance that wasn't going to work out. 50-50 chance because I wasn't thinking about which way I put that in. 50-50 chance when I got to hear that this wouldn't weave. 
unfortunately for me today, it did. If it was, um, if it didn't work, I would have taken out those, that little bit I just put in and started the butterfly on the other side of this section and it would have flipped it around and then this would weave across. So, and actually, amazingly, yeah, see how these are in different sheds? This is something all the time, it's always good to check. So look here, see how these are in a weavable, oh, you can't see that, okay, there. I could weave these three, but these are open. So those two things are in different sheds. Doesn't matter because I'm gonna keep doing pick and pick right here and I will fix the shedding problem later. But I want um, a different color here. gonna do that see Ellen see how I did that this is trapped by this and I just pulled that a little bit so it goes under doesn't always work but So that, I'm doing that because I want to splice in this new color. I hope you all are doing some weaving. and keeping a little bit busy. Let's see. Just don't want this part to be too tight. So I'm also thinking, well, I need enough give in there that um, this little blue part isn't creating a hole here. So that's why I added a little more give in the weft. So Sharon, um, this set is eight ends per inch. The um, This is what the saffron currently comes in at eight ends per inch. There are four of these pegs per inch so that when I warp it like this, there are eight threads per inch, which to be honest, I never actually counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's exactly evenly spaced. So the header, Karen, is, uh, let's see, let me do this again. Hopefully I'm not making you sick. This, she's asking what I did here. This is um, double half hitch knots. So in a case like this where I am going to have fringe on this of some sort, or maybe I'll do a braid or something, but the um, this is a quick way to get started, just to do a row of double half hitch knots. I did this with the warp and I tied them really tightly. And then I just did uh, one, it looks like one and a half sequences with the tails of the yarn I did the knots with to put that little bit of white in there, which I kind of like in the finished piece. Thanks, Robin. 
Um, I'm not entirely happy with this color shift because this piece is only going to be about this big. So I um, will probably take a little bit of this out and go back and shift this color faster because I want it to actually change to this color. So I want to go from red to yellow orange. I don't have a lot of space, so I have to figure out how to make that happen. All right, you guys, um, I've seen a few of you posting what you're weaving on um, Instagram and a few, oops, a few on um, Facebook. So if you are weaving something that you want to share, um, post it and that would be great. The hashtag is right there change the shed Claudia asked I'm considering buying a small loom easy to pack for my trips do you recommend this one one of the things I like about this loom the most which I was surprised by I got this loom right before I went to teach at Red Alder in Washington in February and I just threw it in my suitcase because it comes apart. So it comes apart, you have two of these blocks that look like this, and then this threaded rod. And so for travel, I thought it was brilliant. It had never occurred to me that it would be so useful to have it come apart in pieces, but um, you know, it just fits in between your socks. Uh, these looms are, of course, not, also not hard to travel with. Um, this is, uh, you know, it's flat and sturdy and you can just throw it in your suitcase. So a loom like this is really nice to travel with. They're easy to warp. Um, this one has tensioning. This one does not. They're both really fun to use. There are other ones Shacked makes um, some small looms. And so I'd say, yes, this is a great one to travel with. Um, oh, wow, Sharon. Sharon met someone who was weaving miniature Persian rugs on a little loom. Wow. Um, there are lots and lots of small looms. And um, I did a post about looms just in, I think it was in March, the beginning of March. It's called Tapestry Looms, Five Things You Need to Know on my blog. And I link a whole bunch of looms and different posts in there. So go there and you can see all of the small looms and also big looms. Um, Harlan wants to know, could you use sumac when creating the fell line? Um, this will not have a folded hem. So the only time I use sumac is... And, Sumac is used in a lot of other ways. I'm just saying this is the only way I use it currently <laughs> is to create a fold line for a hem. So I use sumac where I'm going to actually fold. Wait, where's my camera? Where I'm going to make the fold and the sumac shows at the very bottom of the piece. Um, this piece doesn't have any sumac because um, I'm not going to fold it. Kathy Todd Hooker has a book about um, it's called Line and Tapestry, where she talks about using sumac to make lines on the surface of your tapestry. So if you're interested in that, um, her book is a great option. Sumac is a non, um, it doesn't go over under. It's like twining. It's a neutral thing. So um, yeah, you could use a row of sumac to sort of neutralize your shed if your sheds are all messed up. Um, orange with blue. Mandy, I am making a little piece that looks like this is just a sketch. Um, really simple. It's just going to have pick and pick, two lines of pick and pick, and some color gradation. Hopefully. I'll let you know how that went in a day or two. <laughs> Um, oh, Lynn, Lynn asked, how do you decide what weft thread to bring while you're traveling? 
That's the hardest thing on the planet for me. Um, if I'm lucky enough to be traveling to teach a class about color and I have a whole suitcase full of Weaver's Bazaar, I am really happy because I will have any color I want. But if I'm doing my own personal traveling, um, Weaver's Bazaar used to come on little in little balls and they pack really nicely. So I would just have a little packet of those of balls and I would choose like, um, you know, a few gradations of various colors I think I might use. But I've also taken little um, cut pieces of mat board or used strong cardboard and wrapped bits of Weaver's Bazaar yarn around, you know, wound off little bits if I'm gonna do really small tapestries so then I can have more colors. Um, if I'm bringing something like this Harrisville yarn, I um, might make a bunch of butterflies or I will take my ball winder and make smaller balls. Um, it's hard to decide which colors to bring and I always end up somewhere with colors that I, not having the colors I want. And that's a great, um, limitations are the mother of invention. So you learn to decide, oh, well, I'm gonna use purple instead of brown because I don't have a brown and let's just see what happens. Oh, Karen asked, does anyone make small looms out of frames? She's used small frames, painted them, and then did a small tapestry that's all framed. It's a great idea. I have seen a few people do that. Um, so you actually make a loom out of some kind of a frame and get it all prepped and then warp it and weave your piece and then it's all um, finished, which is kind of brilliant, Karen. All right, you guys, thank you so much for coming. And I will be here tomorrow and Friday. I will not be here on the weekend. Um, I'm hoping it won't be snowing and maybe I will be hiking, but um, I will be back again next Monday and we'll just see, um, we'll see how it goes. So go weave something and um, thank you for coming. And I will be here again tomorrow. Thanks so much, you guys. Oh, and thanks for all your help with the sound. I probably have it maybe figured out. We'll get it. We'll get it tomorrow.